Koppel, host of the Time for Coffee podcast, where you get firsthand career advice into the jobs and industries that interest you the most. And before we start today's show, I have a quick favor to ask you. If you haven't already, I'd be incredibly grateful if you give us a rating and a review on iTunes. And if you're like me, you need to do it now because you'll forget later and because it's the best way to help others who may be in search of career advice to find this free resource. So press pause if you haven't done it and do it right now. I'll wait. Thanks so much and enjoy today's show. Hey there, Java Junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or ten minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career double shot K-Cup with my guest, Emily Cunningham. I lost out on some incredible opportunities Mm. to grow faster if only I had dropped the act. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If only I had just been less proud that I had to kind of fake it till I make it and had said, I'm lost. Could you help me? And I just hope our young listeners learn from my mistakes and learn from what you did right, Emily. As they begin their careers. What you said just resonated so strongly with me. And there's something I would love for your listeners to hear as well. I I have a a small personal story on that as well. At the very beginning of my career, that production analyst, production planning capacity analyst role that I had at Chrysler was one of the most harrowing experiences of my professional life. I studied economics, so people often assumed wrongfully that I was like this brilliant mathematician because I had to have passed econometrics and all these statistics courses or whatever, which I did. I did well in those, but I'm a great student. Whereas I was new in my career, I, I was coming into this analytical role that I had no experience with. This is more supply chain oriented work. And I had no experience in supply chain. In the first six months of my career, I was in the office until 9.30 p.m. every day. I was the first one in the office. I was stressed out. I was breaking out with acne on my face in ways I never had before. I think I might have developed an ulcer. I was stressing out terribly because I didn't know how to do what I was doing. And I was the only woman on my team, the only person of color on my team, the only person who hadn't worked at the company for less than 10 years on my team, the only person under 40 on my team. It was not the most open environment, or at least I didn't perceive it to be an open environment to say, hey, I don't really know what I'm doing here, especially since people assumed that I was walking in with all these skills. And it got to a point where, again, as you might assume with all these long nights and these like physical manifestations of this stress, my personal life was beginning to suffer and was distracting me terribly. It got to a point where I just knew I was going to be fired. I was almost certain of it until that very last moment. And I, I don't remember what the impetus was. But I went to my boss and what you might learn at some point, hopefully you never have to learn this personally, but there's something that's called a PIP in the corporate world or a personal improvement plan. And that's generally what happens when companies want to let you know, hey, you're on thin ice. Well, I went to my manager, not knowing that this was a thing yet, but I came to him with a plan on how I plan to get better in my job. So I think I might have just beat him to the point unknowingly. Again, I didn't know at a point what a pit was. And it was at that point that he said, you know what, maybe we should start talking to other teams and see if maybe there's another place where you can apply your skills. Because it seems to me like you're doing your best, but maybe you do better somewhere else inside the company. So that was like my first introduction into other teams. And I got into another team that was more like, sales facing and I excelled at that much better. And I just have to share that because like, just don't suffer in silence. Like there is just no need for it. There's no reason you should be wreaking havoc on your body and justice system. Like there are just so many other ways to go about it than to suffer alone and in silence, asking for help early and often. And even being honest with yourself about 
hey, I know I'm smart. I know I'm talented. Maybe this is not the right you know, spot for me. This is the Albert Einstein. If you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, you're going to think it's stupid, you know? So I just had to share that story because what you said resonated so deeply with me. Oh my gosh, Emily, that was so powerful. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. And it actually made me think of something I posted on LinkedIn a number of weeks ago about how careers unfold mm. and how instead of thinking about how you're going to figure out what you're going to do mm -hmm. as if you're following a recipe in a cookbook, something that works for like every time you make lasagna, you want to do this. Maybe you throw in a little more oregano, maybe you add a little spicy sausage, whatever it is, mm -hmm. but you're basically following a recipe. Mm -hmm. You are not a chef. No. Instead, you're a mad scientist who's <laughs> like in the lab, putting all kinds of shit in the test tubes. Yep. And sometimes it blows up. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's like poof, you know, the big whatever you get all that suit all over yourself. Because the only way you can learn the right formula for you mm -hmm. is by doing it. Yeah, absolutely. You learn by doing. So, so true. it's not that Emily failed. It was not a good fit. It was a god awful fit. Okay, <laughs> move on. It's not, as she said, it has no reflection on her intelligence, her capacity, her talents, her, you know, absolute career down the line, the successes that she has had and will have. Zero. It meant she started in a job that wasn't the right fit. And the same thing may happen to you. Yep. Move on. Use it as a learning experience. And I'm sure that Emily learned stuff in that role that was useful. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And and I just, you're so right. Just using these these things as like inputs into the larger puzzle that will be or the, the larger story that will be your life. And I think that's one of the things that I... I cherish so much about my career. And that's so why I love to talk about how zigzaggy it looks in the outside is that like with each move I've made, I've been building on my own knowledge of like what is right for me and what isn't. I think that with each zig and zag that I've made, I've gotten closer and closer and closer to like the things that feel right for the person and the skills that I am and that I have. The formula. <laughs> yeah. You are perfecting the formula that is Emily Cunningham. Yeah. That's true. It's It's been magical. Full of learnings. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to this latest episode of t for c And if you're interested in learning more about my coaching services for confused college students and recent grads, feel free to check out the Time for Coffee website under the coaching tab at time, the number four, coffee.org or text me at 202-236-5711. One, two. That's 202 236 5712.